Okay, so as I said, we had a Presbyteral Council meeting today, and I would get back to you when I found out more information. And I do now have more information. As you know, we'll, we'll be opening the churches on May 4th for daily Mass. And these guidelines that the diocese has provided are going to go into effect, and I wanted to go over them with you. I figured it's easier to show you the video, the 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 document that the diocese sent and to go over them so uh, the diocese came up with three levels of response and we are at the first of the three which is the lowest which is considered to be heightened awareness now if this thing hits us hard and we become a hot spot then we'll move up to one of the other two or we'll have to go back to suspension but as Archbishop Lucas told us today, and the thing to remember is the dispensation from the Sunday and Holy Day of Obligation remains in force. So, in other words, it is not a mortal sin not to come to Mass uh, during these times because, again, we want people to be safe. And the bishop has that ability to dispense us, in other words, release us from the obligation of attending Mass. And again, this is only during this time. So as he encouraged, and I will encourage, the faithful who are to stay home are encouraged. We're not forcing it, but we're encouraging those who are elderly, those who have underlying medical conditions, those who live with elderly people or those who are at risk, those who have access to those at risk in nursing institutions, those who have upper, upper respiratory or flu-like symptoms, people who live with someone who has upper respiratory or flu-like symptoms, people with COVID-19 or live with someone with COVID-19, people who have been exposed to someone with COVID-19. So again, these conditions that, uh, these are the situations that we're encouraging people who fit into one of these categories to stay home to stop the risk of themselves from catching it or for like it says in letters g and h to hopefully prevent somebody that's been exposed from infecting others so number two is families can Families and individuals can space themselves six feet apart while sitting in every other pew. And every empty pews may be taped off with painting tape. Um, so I took out the tape measure today at St. James, and it turns out it's like every two pews is what equals out to six feet. So I ended up going to Walmart, and I bought a bunch of painting tape, and I have marked off the... Um, basically pews that will be empty during this time how we're going to disinfect the pews afterwards i don't know yet i'm hoping to find out more of that later today uh, people in line for communion should space themselves appropriately forming a single file line so in the church at least at saint james i'm going to go up to saint john's and holy family tomorrow to start marking things off but the idea would be for individual families that are together, they can come up in a single file line, but then the next group of people or an individual should have at least six feet between them and the family that's receiving or in line to receive. Uh, let's see, number four, there shall be no passing of collection baskets. Parishes should utilize the central collection basket and as I've said this is my plan uh, we are planning on doing that we will have a basket at the back of each of the churches and that Holy Family will have a basket at the entrance to the hall uh, let's see encourage the faithful to cough into their sleeves not hard uh, I think it's kind of common sense Distribute the Holy uh, distribute Holy Communion under the species of bread alone. Well, again, that's not a problem here. Eliminate the optional exchange of peace. We've been doing that since December because of cold and flu, and we'll continue to do that for the indefinite future. 
require ordinary and extraordinary ministers of Holy Communion to wash and sanitize their hands before and after Mass. Hand washing includes the fingertips, should be with soap and water for 20-30 seconds, have hand sanitizer available in the sanctuary for any ordinary or extraordinary ministers who touch their faces prior to distributing communion. After the distribution of communion, hand sanitizer is not to be used unless fingers are first purified in the ablution vessel, and gloves are not to be used while distributing Holy Communion. So it was asked to me earlier uh, if we could use tongs. Well, no. Omit the spontaneous gesture of hand-holding during the Our Father. So, for I don't know where this began, but I have seen it in different places where people like to hold hands during the Our Father. We're encouraging that to come to an end for now. Do not hold, well, that doesn't really apply to us. Do not hold Eucharistic or other liturgies in a daily Mass chapel if there's a large church at the parish. Well, this is the reason why at Holy Family we'll be doing Mass in the parish hall instead of the church. Avoid the use of holy water, fonts, missalettes, and hymnals. I have begun to remove the missals and hymnals from the pews, and we ha removed the holy water fonts back in March when this thing started to hit. Encourage ushers to open doors and welcome the faithful at Mass. That won't be a problem. My plan is to leave the doors open. Uh, I hopefully will be the one that will leave the doors open. Um, and then we'll try to figure out the sanitizing of that afterwards. Pastors may consider adding additional weekend Masses. That one's going to be a little hard. Um, we, we're looking at it. I, I had a chance to ask the Archbishop today. Like on Sundays, we already have three Masses, and that's the max that a priest is supposed to have. But in special circumstances, they could do a fourth. Uh, he encouraged us right now just to see how this goes, these new guidelines go. And if there are more people, then we'll have to adapt to that. Uh, again, on Saturday nights at St. James, I'm still looking into how we're going to do this. Uh, again, the thing to realize is with the pews being marked off to six feet apart from each other, we have six rows of pews on each side. So uh, just to consider that. Uh, pastors are encouraged to consider continue live streaming the masses. I will continue to do that myself. I will do that during the week. And then on the Sunday morning, 7 o'clock mass, mostly because that's the only Mass on Sunday that I will have access to the Wi-Fi network. Pastors are to continue pr to present measures hearing confessions within a six-foot buffer between priest, penitent, avoiding small confessionals. So my goal is hopefully, like I did during Holy Week, to set up an outdoor confessional near the church so that way um, we can't use the confessionals that we have currently at all three parishes it's just too small it's too close i uh, could do it in the sacristy but it's a little too cramp in there so like i said as long as the weather is good it's my hope to be able to do outdoor confessionals so this one here is a draft that was issued by the diocese and i believe this no it was the nebraska department of health and human services it's a supplement to what was originally issued on April 2nd. Uh, basically, the reopening of faith-based services held in worship, houses of worship during the continual threat of coronavirus should not be interpreted as a demulation lessening of the threat of the virus. Failure to appear to appropriate safeguards during the conduct of such services could result in the loss of human life. Leaders of faith communities should lead and demonstrate by word and action the continual necessity of appropriate social distancing and other precautions, including maintaining six feet of different distance between parties as defined below. And we'll go into that. They explain what parties are. Faith leaders are responsible for the safety of those who attend services and house of worship and must limit physical participation on the premises depending on the size and the structure of the house of worship. 
This document anticipates flexibility in the timing of reopening of services at houses of worship throughout the state based on the judgment of the faith leaders responsible for making such decisions. So again, this is part of the document that the diocese sent to us, the previous document that I just got done reading. Again, talking about those that should stay at home, the elderly, those that have underlying medical conditions, those who are at risk, those who work with the elderly in nursing institutions, those who have been exposed to it. Um, seating in houses of worships, should it be arranged in such a way as to maintain appropriate social distancing between parties. And here's where they define party. Party should be understood to include members of a household who live together and therefore may be seated together in the house of worship, but should maintain a di social distance from other parties. So again, the idea is that if you live, if you're a member of the same family but live in different houses, we're encouraging people to still social distance within the church. Uh, seating doors, restrooms, common areas should be sanitized between services. We're working on implementing that. Faith communities are encouraged to continue the use of video and other streaming technologies. We're still doing that. Faith communities are encouraged to add additional service times. Again, we're looking into doing that. Uh, we will be reinstituting the weekday mass at Holy Family. And depending on how things go at St. John's, we might add an additional mass during the week. Again, hopefully, hopefully we'll figure that out soon. Uh, but as you can see, a lot of this is in the previous document. The passing of a common collection basket or any other item between parties is contrary to good health practices as it would contribute to the spread of the virus and is therefore strongly discouraged. discouraged. Uh, the use of sacred books, hymnals, missiles that remain in the house of worship for the general use by those present is discouraged as such materials can facilitate the spread of the virus. Those attending, and this is the key here, this is something that's important to know, those attending may bring their own sacred books, etc., to the service and take them home after the service. So if you have the Magnificat, if you have the readings on iBrevery on your phone, you can bring those. Um, and actually, I will encourage people with iPhones or iPads to bring them to be able to follow along with the readings if that is their desire. The conduct of faith scheduled faith services is contemplated by this guidance document but and this is important here fellowship social gatherings or other functions before or after the services on the premises of the house of worship is highly discouraged as such gatherings would expose those present to the virus so again i'm thinking with like our first communion coming up uh the reception into the church of one of our candidates uh, it, we were originally planning on having parties after both events, but because of these circumstances, we'll have to forego that for the near future. Hopefully, when everything calms down, then maybe we can have a big party for that. Uh, children present at services should remain with their parents or guardians and refrain from congregating or interacting with other children, with children of other parties on the premises. Again, the use of staff or volunteers to hold open doors to the house of worship so that those attending are not touching common door handles is highly encouraged. See, this is the other thing too that I'm considering when we are looking at Mass at St. John's because we have a big basement, but the problem is we have the handle on the side, on the, wall, the door hand or the stair handles or whatever those things are called. And the problem is if everybody is touching it, that kind of goes contrary to, you know, the idea of avoiding contaminating things. Religious services that include a distribution of communion are highly encouraged to adhere to additional precautions, including, uh, well, this doesn't apply to us because we do not have prepackaged communion elements. Uh, we do not distribute the cup and we won't be doing that during this time. So, uh, but these are the guidelines that the diocese has implemented. 
uh, that has been given to us that has been done with the work of Governor Ricketts and Lieutenant Governor Foley. They are given to us by the Department of Health and Human Services of Nebraska and the Council of Priests that have originally put that into implementation, including Dr. Fisher from Lincoln's Holy Family Medical Services, Father Kubot, who was a who is a medical doctor, was a medical doctor before he became a priest and still has his his medical license. Uh, the state epidemiologist, I think that's the fifth time I said that word this year. Uh, so again, just to ask for your patience during these times. The main thing to realize is, as Bishop Lucas said, things are not going to be normal for the near future. It's going to be a long time before we get to return to normal. Uh, for myself, I've been told to prepare to do my annual retreat on my own. Usually we go to Waverly out by Lincoln to go to the retreat house, but with these social distancing guidelines, it's going to be impossible for all of us to do that because usually at a retreat there's about 50 or 60 of us so again just to ask for your patience during this time please use common sense if you're not feeling well please 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 stay at home uh, better to be safe than sorry and again to realize that because in these times it is not a sin if you do not come to church it is not a mortal sin you're not going to go to hell if you decide to stay home during these times so with that I thank you for watching uh, again I will pass more information on to you as I receive it so until next time until I see you again God bless